this final video, I'll take a look at an example plugin, which will quickly go through the basics of creating plugins. <clears throat> it won't be super extensive. Plugins can get uh, very complex or they can be very simple, but they cover a wide range of topics and a wide range of coding styles. So we'll just look at some important bits and pieces to help you get started. Uh, for this plugin, I'll create something which will create a custom post type and use some custom post data as well and even uh, we'll muck about in the, po in the uh, main query a little bit. So let's get started. Let's create a post type for book reviews. And for this example, I'll use, there we go, I'll use 2015, last year's WordPress theme, with some test data that we've imported um, in the previous video. All right, so let's get started. There we go. First of all, what we'll need to do is create a plugin which we can activate. To get that done, We'll need to go to our plugins folder and create a folder named whatever we want book reviews you should make this unique especially if you want to release it in the repository all plugins that have been created for wordpress have to have unique folder names so let's name that book review and create a file in there named same way book reviews.php oops all right now i'll open this whole folder in my text editor there we go. And let's add some header data in here. So what you'll need to do is add a plugin header here. I'll cheat from something in the article. There we go. So let's name this book reviews. Give a new URI, it can be bookreviews.com. I'm sure that exists. That's great book to our site. There we go. Perfect. Now we can already check out this plugin and activate it. There we go. So it's right here. Activate it. It does absolutely nothing, but it's already active, so we can start adding some code. Our first order of business is to create a custom post type. Uh, you can do that in a number of ways. Um, I like to go to the register post type function documentation and just copy paste the example from there and just modify it as I need it. There's a big, big example somewhere down here. It's right, no. There it's right here. You can copy this all in and just switch out all the text for what you need. Or you can go to generate WP and you can find the post type generator there and fill out all the fields there. I think it should be post type there we go so if you fill in all these fields it will generate the code for you and you can just copy paste it from here but let's do it this way this is actually already an example for books so it will be easy to overwrite so it hooks into the init hook so book we'll just abbreviate, abbreviate book reviews with the br post type there we go so this will be Book reviews. Singular name is book review. And then this is uh, book review. Whatever, add new, add new. Review. New book. This is all singular. There we go. This is plural. Reviews. Reviews. Let's not worry about the plugin text domain for now. That's for translation. This should be the same as the um, plugin folder name, by the way. So we can just mass replace these with book reviews there we go so um, then this is actually just an array of labels so this doesn't register anything yet uh, this is an array of options so this doesn't register anything yet but the array of options does contain our labels description book reviews for our site uh, public, you can feel free to read what these mean. These are actually not needed if public is true. Let's make the slug book review. Let's use underscores book review. Keep it post. Yeah, you don't need to worry about these. And then register post type book reviews. This is what actually registers the, uh, the book review. So if you go to the admin, you should see that a book reviews menu pops up. You can customize the icon if you want, by the way, I like doing that. If you go to the dash, if you search for dash icons, this is the icon set that WordPress uses now. You can get a list of nice ones, so let's try and filter this for book. 
There we go. This looks nice. So dash icons book is the string to use. I think what you need to do is first let's try out what I think works and then see if it actually does work. Icon. It might be menu icon actually. You don't need to know everything off by heart. Let's see if the icon gets updated. There we go. So you can see that the nice book icon is used. You can use all the ones in the dash icons a set or you can actually use your own as well. You can just uh, enter the URL, take, check out the documentation for more info there. Right, so now that we have this book review, let's actually add one. Let's uh, use something like Making Money. It's a Terry Pratchett book. I just copied the first paragraph from Amazon. There we go, let's publish that. There we go. Now what I'd like to happen is, you can check this out, there is a single post URL. If this doesn't work for you when you register a post type, what you need to do is you need to go to the admin and you need to just visit the permalinks page. There is a way around this, but I don't really want to get into it just now. But once you do that, you can actually visit this URL and it will work. This has to do with the updating of uh, URL rewrite rules. Don't worry about it for now. Right, so this is a book review, but what I'd really like is for this to show up in my main post list here. It doesn't because this main post list only lists posts. I can get around that by using the pre-get posts hook, which allows me to <clears throat> directly modify what posts are shown. Now this is a pretty dangerous hook. I'll write down what I think will work and we'll discuss it right after that. So we're using pre-get posts hook, add reviews, well actually let's be thorough, add book review to um, query. So let's use that function. And all this does, this function does, is allow us to add stuff to the main WordPress query, which is what is used when the loop is being generated. So basically what we want to do is this. Here we go. So for every query, we want to set the post type to post and book review, which is actually not book review, it's book review, there we go. Right, the reason that we need to be really careful is that this pre-get posts hook actually works on the back end as well. So if you take a look on the front end here, this works just fine, here's our sticky post and here's making money. Um, I'll just actually go to the back end and remove that sticky post so we can, we don't need to scroll all the time. Quick edit, no that's a schedule one. Um, there we go, so here's the sticky one. Um, this post sticky, there we go. Great, so making money is on top, there we go. Um, and now if you take a look at this post list, if I reload it, it should have making money here as well, and this is not a post. Also, if you go to the pages section, sorry, not the pages section, book review section, it also has all the posts. And the reason is that this pre-get post hook just runs all the time for any post type. So you need to be really careful what you do here. Um, a quick way to make sure that it's not available in the admin or it's not applied to the admin is just to use a conditional tag to make sure we are not in the admin. So in this case, we can take a look at book reviews. Pre-get posts is not applied because we are in the admin. And here it is applied because we're not in the admin. There we go. All right, so pretty good so far. Another thing we might like to do is, um, hold on, is maybe indicate what type of post type we're looking at here. So what you could do, there are a lot of ways to do this, but remember that um, we're, we're trying to write a plugin. We're not trying to write a child theme for 2015. So one good way of doing this would be, um, if you're doing a child theme, is to, let me show you that sticky post thing again. Let's make this sticky. Going to quick edit. Sticky, there we go. And if you reload this, there's a little sticky indicator on top, which looks really nice. Um, one way to do it is, to, is would be to create the same indicator, but indicate what type of post it is. Now this would be great for 2015, but when you switch themes, it will look a bit weird. Um, so if you switch to 2016, you'll still have the word here, um, let's say post or book review, but it will it will be taken out of context. There's no CSS, it will be a bit weird. It will just be floating all over the place. So that's not a real good idea. But what we can do is attach it to the, to the title and prepend the title with the type of post type that we're using. 
that will work across all themes nicely because it will be very obvious. So what we need to do is add a filter, add filter to the title. There we go. Add or prepend post type. There we go. Function prepend post type. There we go. And all we need to do is, oh, actually this takes um, two arguments. And one of the arguments is a title. The second one is the ID of the post. So first of all, let's find the post type of the post that we're displaying, or the post type of the title, or the post of the title that we're displaying. And then create a little array. This isn't the best practice in the world, but we'll create an array which translates our post types to something that we'd actually want to display. So when, when it's a post, post type, we'll, we'll display blog. When it's a book review, we'll display review. Wonderful. So what we'll do is we'll just return um, title, but we want to prepend types post, whoops, post type to it. There we go. And possibly add a little additional small tag in there to make it smaller. There we go. Types, that should work fine. And then right after here, we'll end the small tag. So let's add a colon there. That looks fine. Maybe add a line break as well. This isn't great again, but the point is for you to see how the mechanics of this. Oh, look at that unexpected. 68. Yeah, I forgot. Semicolon, there we go. Right, so now we have the post type added here. It's not super nice but uh, I think it's really obvious how the mechanics work. All right, so you might need to be careful here as well because we might have just prepended everything again. So we've prepended all this HTML to the titles here. Again, you'll need to use some conditional tags to make this more specific. So what we could do, for example, is um, just use the front page. So if fine and we're still here so perfect there we go this will also get around the problem of, of making these show up on the single pages because if we would just leave it like we, we had it before we would also have this on the single pages it's not a tragedy but it might be a bit confusing and there we go so for now this will do just fine uh, one more thing I'd like to show you is custom data for custom post data that is stored in the post meta table so for regular posts we have all this data right here but we might want specific other data for reviews like for example who wrote the book how long the book is and so on so one of the simplest ways to do that is to use post meta so we'll go here oh did I not add a title to this look you see there seems to be a problem with the no title here and actually nothing has a title so yep because I didn't notice this before again this is why you need to be really careful with how you hook things Make sure you don't modify things that you don't want to. So here, if we're on the home page, we actually want all this to run. And if we're not on the home page, we don't. So this seems to work. But the problem is, since this is a function, uh, this is a filter, we need to return something. And we've actually returned something, but only in this if statement. So we need to return something here as well, just in case we're not on the home page. So all we need to do here is just return the original title. This is why you need lots of practice for creating plugins to know what you can and what you can't modify and what you're modifying when you're actually writing some code. So now all that's done, let's get back to PostMeta. If we go to our book reviews, you can see the, here we go, nope, you might need to switch these things on, no. All right, so it seems that WordPress, if you look in the register post type, register post type, it doesn't add custom post data to uh, custom post types. So supports for all the things that it can be supported. Let's see custom fields. Here we go. So when we register the post type, we need to make sure that it supports this feature. Here we go. 
it supports comments, it supports an excerpt, and we also need to support custom fields. When we do, it will show up here in the back end. Here we go, custom fields. So let's add a custom field. Let's call it author. Just Terry Pratchett. There we go, let's add another one. Let's call it um, score. Five out of five, or maybe 10 out of 10. All right, custom field, there we go. So this data has now been added to our book review. You can see it listed here. Our next task is to basically just list it over here. So let's go to our single post here and make sure that we only list it on our single post page. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably attach it to the content and just add it after the content. So what I'll do is very similar to how we did it with the titles. What I do is add action, I'm sorry, add filter, the content. Now, if you don't know, one sec, prepend book data. There we go. Function prepend. Now, if you don't know what arguments this um, you'll get here inside this function, you should probably check the, the content documentation. There we go. Let's see an example. You just get the content. All right, there we go. And you can also see that, uh, here we go, post icon. All right, so content. We're also within the loop. So hopefully, well, first thing, let's return to content so we don't mess up like I did before. There we go. You can see that it works if you prepend something to it. Let's see. Hello. We should see hello over here. There we go, perfect. All right, so what we want to do is first of all, make sure that this only happens on his singular book review pages. There we go. So what we'll do is we'll return book review like that. Otherwise, we'll return the content just to make sure that everything has a content. Here's our book review, and if we look at the recent post, tile gallery, then it doesn't have that content prepended, perfect. So now here, what we can do is some magic. There we go, content, good. So first of all, before we return things, let's query for this data. So we can say, first of all, you should probably know that we are in the loop here. So if you say return content and prepend get the ID, you'll see the ID there. There we go. So you can use all the template tag functions. So what we'll do is author is get post meta, which is the function that gets all this metadata, the custom data. What it needs is a post ID, which will be get the ID. It also needs the name of the field. And you'll also need to prepend a variable, sorry, a, uh, another parameter named true. Um, I'll talk about this in a second. 59, there we go. Let's also query, you can, well, we can actually prepend it to see if it works. There we go, Terry Pratchett. And there's another data that we've added, which is, there we go, which is score. I should probably use an under, uh, lower case for that. There we go. Score. Score. There we go, perfect. Great, so now if I use score here, it should show 10 out of 10. Wonderful. So what we'll do is we'll create some HTML here. So we can do this, HTML equals. Book meta. We could use. Author. Score. Score. And then prepend this HTML to our content. There we go. So now this will show up below each custom post type or actually the review post types. Now again, just as I mentioned in the PHP video, if you don't have data, you need to account for that. So you need to make sure that 
this author block isn't shown if there's no author and so on. So you could do this with a couple of if statements and so on. But for now, this shows the, the way to do this very well. All right, so that's the basics of creating plugins. There's a lot to know about creating plugins. You can add style sheets from within a plugin. Um, you can use um, other plugins from within plugins. Um, you can modify a lot of WordPress core functions without touching the core code, and there's just a whole world of things to do. So hopefully this was a good introduction. If you have any questions, let us know.